Hello, welcome back and welcome to my latest candlestick special. It's all about understanding, mastering and getting to know how to trade candlesticks. So let's get into it. What you will learn, um, three steps, the basics of candlesticks for beginners. If you know already a little bit of um, trading and candlesticks, don't skip it. You might learn something new and it never hurts to repeat the basics. Point two is that we will take a look at the various candlestick patterns. I will tell you what they are. And then the third step, we will take a look at some charts and I will show you how to use the candlestick knowledge for actual trading decisions and how to understand your charts better. So let's get into it. First, we need to be clear about the candlestick anatomy. Um, usually when you look at a chart, they're either black or white, uh, black and white or green and red. And in general, technical analysis, the old school way, um, what it was used or how it was used to display is that when the price is going up, you have a white candle and when the price is going down you have a black candle. In the next step I will show you exactly how this manifests on your charts. For now it's just important to note that um, there are different components of a candlestick. The, the little um, thin stick so to speak those are called uh, candlestick shadows or also candlestick wicks and the solid part here and here that's the candlestick body. And there are different variations of candlesticks that we will get to know in a moment. So a candlestick is a representation of price and a candlestick shows you exactly how the price is moving. It is a very detailed way of looking at price action and um, for many traders these days it's the preferred way of looking and understanding price charts. So what this candlestick is showing you, this is a white candlestick and if you remember white candlestick means going up. So this already tells you that the price was going up and there are a few points to a candlestick that we need to understand and need to be aware of. The first one is the open. When did the candlestick start? In case of a white candlestick it always starts at the lower end of the candlestick body. So at 10 and the closing price of a candlestick is the other solid part of um, the candlestick body. So in this case the candlestick opened at 10 and it closed at 20. And the candlestick with uh, wicks it shows you the, the total range of the price movements. So in technical analysis when you look at charts you have the opportunity to divide them in different um, time frames so to speak and then one candlestick is a representation of one time unit. So for example, if we look at a daily, daily candle uh, or a daily price action chart, then one candlestick is the representation of one complete trading day. If you're looking for or, or at a one hour time frame, it means that one candlestick repre represents the price action for one hour. And it then means that within this hour, the price opened at 10. So maybe at 9 a.m. the price opened at 10 and then one hour later at 10 a.m. it closed at 20 and within that hour it ranged all the way from 5 to 25. So this is all the information condensed into one candlestick. And what often helps is that we can follow the path of price when we look at a candlestick and we visualize it. So let's assume it opened at 10 as we will see by the body and then it moved all the way down to 5. You can see that as displayed at the candlestick wick and then it moved all the way to 25 this is the high point of the candlestick and then finally it moved back to 20 and this is where it closed and this is then how your candlestick with this price path is uh, going to display at your charts and when we now um, line up a few candlesticks um, what we will do later when we take a look at our live charts and at the charts in general, then when we line up our candlesticks, we can follow the path of price. So remember, white means going up, black means going down. So a white candlestick, we always start at the bottom and then we move up. So the price opened here 
it moved here. Then the next candle, it opened at the bottom because it's white again. It moved up, it closed here. Then the next candle, it opened at the top. And because this is a black candle, the price then moved down and this is where it closed. Then the white candle, this is where it opens, it moves up and here's where it closes and so on and so forth. And when we just line up and connect the opening prices and the closing prices, you can see that here. So here is then the price and then we close here, we close here, we close here, we close here. And you can see that every time when the candlestick closes, that is where we make a dot. So sometimes when you look at price action charts, um, the very basic way is looking at a line graph. This is usually also what you see in television or in newspaper, if you still know what this is. Uh, but line graphs are usually what is there and the information is more condensed. We don't see how much the price was moving up or down. Um, this only the candlesticks are telling us how much within this time period was the price going up or down. We don't see that in a line graph. We only see that in a candlestick. But a line graph can also be valid sometimes when you just want to have a basic view of what is going on in the markets. So let's move on. And there are going to be different shapes, sizes, formats of candlesticks. And each format and size tells us a little bit about um, the strength of the market. Who is controlling the market? Are the buyers who push the price up stronger or are the, the sellers who push the price uh, down stronger? And we can see that depending on how large the body is, how large is the wig and how large is the ratio from the body to the wig. So when we look at, um, when we go here from the left to the right, you can see here a very, very bullish candle. Bullish means up, obviously, because white means that the candlestick is going up. And then we move here to less bearish, uh, less bullish, which means that the, the, um, the body is becoming smaller and the wick is becoming larger. So this means obviously that yes, the price did move all the way up here during the duration of this candle, but the price was not able to close at the top. So there were a few sellers in the market who pushed price down. Here you can see that the price opened here. The price moved all the way to the top, but then sellers came in and the price uh, closed here. So it's much less bullish than this one. Here you can see that uh, as well, the price opened here, then it moved down, it moved up and then it closed here. So again, less bullish. This is, we are going to take a look at this later, a so-called doji. This is a neutral candlestick. It means that the price opened here, it moved up, it moved down, and then it closed all the way right at the center where it opened. So it's a neutral. Within this candlestick, the price did not, or within the candlestick, the price did move. But when you just look at the open and the close, it didn't move. And then we become uh, bears. You can see that here, the price opens here, it moves down, it moves up, it moves down, and then it closes here. Here, and less, uh, more bearish and here very very bearish where the price uh, opened here and it just fell during the duration of the candle and it closed at the very very low. This will become very handy knowing uh, when we take a look at uh, candlesticks at our charts later on. Pin bar. So let's take a look at a few general the classic um, candlesticks and then you will have a very solid foundation about candlestick knowledge and then we can take a look at some charts. So we are just going to take a look at uh, the five most important candlesticks and I'll show you what they are and how they manifest and what they mean. And it always is important to, and it helps a lot, to look at the path of price and look at what it's telling us. So this is a called a pin bar. Um, it usually has a very long candlestick wick to either side and then um, the body of the candlestick is at the other side. And what this means is that the market opened here, it tried to move higher, but it got rejected and then the price moved down and closed all the way here. So this is a very, very bearish signal. And when you see a pin bar with a large uh, candlestick wick sticking out to the top, it can often mean that the candles afterwards uh, will move into the direction or into the opposite direction of the wick. In this case, it is a good chance that the price will then uh, are continuing lower. This is what we call a Marubozu. This is a high momentum, a very, very strong candle, as we've seen uh, two slides previously. It means that the market opened here and then it closed here. 
no wick at all. Sometimes they can have very tiny wicks, but usually they don't have large wicks. And the best is when they don't have wicks at all, when the market just moved one direction from the open to the close. And here the case of the bearish candle from the open to the close, no opposition. Um, one side of the market completely dominated the price action. Then we have a doji. As I said, this is a neutral candle. The price opened, it moved up, it moved down, and then we closed right where we opened. So although the price did move within the candle duration, it closed right where we are, and it means that the buyers and the sellers, the bulls and the bears, they are in an equilibrium, they are equally strong, and they are they're just cancelling each other out. An engulfing candle is a two candlestick formation, which is interesting, and it can tell us a lot more about the markets. So without, uh, with the candlestick, the first candle is usually quite small because the second, as the name suggests, then completely engulfs the previous candle. So in this case, we have a small bearish candle and then the second one is very, very large and completely engulfs the previous. So let's take a look at the path of price. The price opened here with this uh, bearish candle, then it moved all the way to the bottom and then it moved all the way to the top and then this is where it uh, closed. So you can see this is then how the engulfing candle is forming and what often happens is that you can see engulfing candles at the end of a trend. So often the price will come down, will come down in a strong trend, then you will have a sudden pause, a very small candle, and then the market jumps into the new direction. And then afterwards the market and the price action has a very, very high likelihood of continuing into the path of the engulfing candle, as we'll see. Three inside up, so we have taken a look at the pin bar, which is a one candlestick pattern. We have taken a look at the engulfing bar, which is a two candlestick pattern. And we have um, also three candlestick patterns. And this is called the three inside up. Of course, there are dozens and dozens of different candles, but once you understand how to read the path of price, and once you really know how to look beyond the candlesticks, then you really don't need to memorize all those dozens and however many candlesticks you can find out there. It is more than enough if you can read the path of price. And then what the great thing that then happens is that you are not um, limited to those template candlesticks. You're not only limited to what your textbooks show you, but you can just really read any price chart. So the three end setup is also often a reversal pattern. The price often comes down. And then here we have a strong down candle, the price closes here, then it moves down a little bit and you can see that it is now accelerating to the, uh, to the upside. So this is a reversal where often you also have something like a pin bar, sometimes this spike can be a little bit or this candlestick can be a little bit longer. And then afterwards here we have a marubozo, which then shows that the market is really gaining strength into the opposite direction. So very, very interesting. Um, candlestick as well or candlestick formation. So let's take a look at a few charts and see how we can apply our knowledge. And one of the most important things and the most obvious things when we look at candlesticks, uh, we can look at trends and ranges. And you can see often that during trends, the market moves quite orderly. What this means is that you can see here we are, or the price was in a downtrend, here the price was in an uptrend, and within the downtrend you see that there are mostly, or there are only red candles, there's not too many wicks, there are a few wicks but not too many, especially to the downside there are almost no wicks. The same here, we have only green candles, small wicks, not that meaningful, uh, and the market just moves very, very orderly in one direction. However, once the market or once the trend is uh, over, you will get warning signals. The market, usually it just doesn't go in one straight line, up and down, up and down. Often you can get clues from the market and here you can see suddenly the candles will get smaller, the wicks will get larger here at the bottom and you will also have larger green candles. Whereas previously we only had red candles, suddenly we start to see green candles and the wicks get uh, larger which means that the market is moving more. It is not moving anymore into just one direction with a uh, straight um, path, but now it is moving up and down. And this is showing you already and giving you an indication that the market is, or that the trend here is not as strong anymore. And then the same happens here. Um, suddenly we have large red candles. 
look at the previous trend there were no red candles whatsoever the market was just moving in one straight line and then suddenly we have large wicks we have large red candles and there's this famous quote that volatility is highest at the market turning points which means that when the market goes from a down uh, uptrend to a downtrend or from a downtrend to an uptrend there are those turning points and at the turning points volatility the way the price moves um, up and down increases and this is something that we can see from the candle size but also from the wicks very uh, very very important and we can see it here once again the market moved up very nicely a few little red candles but overall very orderly there are also almost no candlestick wicks and then here suddenly you can see we have some dojis two dojis in a row suddenly we have large candlestick wicks in both directions suddenly the, we have large red candles as well whereas previously we only had small uh, red candles and then this is then an indication okay the trend here to the upside is over and it's time to maybe look for the opposite direction so you can see if we put things together um, we can already have a very very good understanding of uh, the market structure and how to read price action and now we can take this even one step further so let's first take a look at another example of market structure during a range which means that the market is just moving sideways uh, this is where the buyers and the sellers are roughly equal um, there will be a lot of volatility a lot of back and forth and you can see it very large candles to both sides large red large green very very large wicks as well which is always a sign that the market is very erratic that both sides are equal um, and just about to test out who is stronger and then once the market makes a breakout and gets into a trending phase you can see that the candles become smaller the wicks become smaller uh, and it is more orderly there's not a lot of up and down and those are the nice trends uh, that you want to find that you want to time then and when it comes to timing we'll get into this in a moment so let's take a look at market timing and how we can use candlesticks to actually get into trades and a very very famous way of doing that is uh, with pullback trading so i have painted a moving average don't ask me which moving average it's not really important um, you can use pretty much any moving average and you need to see uh, does the market that you are trading um, adapt and really uh, respect the moving average and then you can see the market is in a trend and a pullback means that the market is coming back to the moving average like here uh, here it overshot it but here it came back again and what do we see here an engulfing bar very nice um, entry here you can see a good trend short consolidation the market moves back into the moving average and then after this um, this engulfing pin bar is showing this could have been your entry don't get into a market just because it is uh, hovering and moving back into a moving average this will not work you can see it here the market stayed around the moving average we never had any good price action and never had any really good candlestick pattern so um, trading just blindly with a um, moving average is not really good so a move, uh, here we have an engulfing candle the second candle completely engulfs, engulfs the, on the previous one and then the market continues higher here as well the uptrend is resumed and then here we have a very very nice um, pin bar the market moves back into the moving average it rejects it it leaves a very very long candlestick wick and then it continues its way higher um, well you can find this pretty much everywhere we have here a range market then a breakout the market consolidates it leaves here a wick to the downside so this is a little bit of a mix between a pin bar and an engulfing bar and you can see this large green candle engulfs the previous one two three four five candles it leaves the wick it, do it doesn't have to precisely touch the moving average necessarily but if you have the context here where you can really read the story that the price is telling you this may be enough and then you can see the price continues higher moves sideways um, and then again we have this pin bar here with the wick testing um, the moving average and then it moves it closes above the moving average after the retest so-called retest that the pullback was successful and then the price moves higher <clears throat> here by the way the price comes back to the moving average but here we don't get any candlestick pattern so we shouldn't have traded this always wait for a candlestick for confirmation this will help you have more consistency 
and really um, create a trading approach without being um, all over the place and always just jumping in and out. <clears throat> of course, we can also, instead of um, trading pullbacks, we can also trade um, reversals. And you can see that here the market was in an uptrend. Then here we have a very large candlestick. And the larger the wick, usually the better the, the, the signal is. And as we have learned, when we see such a pin bar, then the market has a good chance of moving into the opposite direction away from the candlestick wick, which happened here. It did not move a lot, of course. Um, this is not always going to be a completely uh, new trend. Sometimes you will just catch a small move, but it all matters about the long term. So if you take this over and over again, you maybe refine it a little bit, then you may end up with a very solid approach. And then here we have something again, but you can see a very, very small candlestick here. Compare this wick here at the top to this wick and you can already see the difference. Here a very, very small candlestick wick, not that great. Here again we have a great one. Why? Because you have an engulfing um, position, uh, engulfing candlestick with a long wick. So we have two nice um, signals that come together and afterwards you can see the market moved lower. And then here at the bottom we have another pin bar. So, and then the market moves higher. Sometimes you will be able to trade from pin bar to pin bar to pin bar to pin bar. Sometimes there will be also um, engulfing bars, three inside ups. Um, so if you learn how to master them uh, and use them at very important price areas, if you've seen my support and resistance video, you will know here is a very important support, uh, resistance, a previous high point. Here is a very important support the way it seems, where we have previous confirmation. And if you can combine support and resistance with um, candlesticks, then this could already uh, help you make much better trading decisions. Here, another example. Uh, after this long trend, we have a very great pin bar, and it can also help to find or to wait for pin bars after the trend has gone on. Remember here, we had a pin bar, but this was just the beginning of the trend. So here were probably still a lot of people who were not done yet with buying. So going against this new trend may be a little bit risky. Here, on the other hand, you can see the market was already trending for a long, long time. And then here at the top, we have this pin bar, very nice. It sticks out very, very well. And then afterwards, you have a very good, significant move to the downside. And then a new trend has started to the downside. We have a few pullbacks right at the moving average here. So you could have looked for another um, entry, maybe a pin bar here or here uh, or here a tree inside up. Here what we have is then again a very interesting pin bar and if you see something significant like this, this is often a very promising trading opportunity. Uh, if you see something like this and you look left and you see the price and the market hasn't shown such a huge reaction in dozens and dozens and dozens of candles, then this may um, highlight something very significant in the market. And especially if it comes with a pin bar, then you may have had the opportunity to trade here to the downside. Here a few more um, pullbacks. So this is general trend following. We're not going against the trend. You can see the market was here in an uptrend. It was trading above this moving average. Then it comes down, leaves this um, pin bar. Where is this pin bar? Also interesting. You can see it is happening right here where there was a previous support area. Then the market continues higher. We have another little support area in this case, uh, even support and resistance. You can see here the high point, here the low point, and then here a pullback right at the moving average with a pin bar. So very interesting how this comes together. Here you can see the market doesn't come all the way to the moving average, but again, we have a very interesting level. If you connect the low and the low and the low and those highs, you have a, a straight line this is called a support and resistance or a break and retest area, a pin bar, and then again we move higher. So last example, and it's always, as I said, whenever you see something as significant as this, this should really uh, get your attention. And looking left, you can see that we haven't had a candle stick with such a long wick uh, all in this whole uh, chart context, actually. And also, where does it happen? It happens at a previous point at a previous swing low, at a previous support area, after a long trend. So we have a long trend um, that has already matured. And remember in the beginning, we looked at the trend structure here, a very orderly trend, 
only red candles and then here suddenly we start to see more large green candles and a lot of wicks so this trend was clearly over the downtrend was over the market was going sideways this is then what we call a failed or a fake breakout here we fail to break out below the previous low point then we leave this huge wick and afterwards you can see the market starts a new trend so this is how you can put it slowly together it may not be enough to just go out there and start making million dollars but this is a very solid approach and probably much much better and more and gives you more robust signals than the regular candlestick trading that you see uh, anywhere else so i hope you enjoyed this if you did let me know so i can make more of those videos also let me know which type of videos you want to uh, want me to do uh, indicators price action and also please let me know the exact topics and i will do that for you happy trading and hope to see you next time